So you're wondering what the difference is between threadless versus threaded stems, headsets, and forks are, if they each have the pros and cons, and if you should be using one over the other. The answer is yes. What's up? I'm Zach Alardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous, and consider subscribing and hitting the like button so YouTube knows to recommend you more fixed gear and cycling videos just like this one. Wobby Cycles is one of my favorite fixed gear brands because they pay very close attention to detail when it comes to making their bikes as fun to ride as they are. Part of what gives Wobby bikes their magic is how they're constructed and what they're constructed out of. High quality, lightweight steel. If you want to learn more about what exactly brings a steel bike to life and why so many people like myself keep saying things like steel is real or I really have no desire to ride any other frame material, you can check out the steel tubing video by clicking the card above. Here are the pros and cons of threadless versus threaded cockpit setup so you can figure out which one is best for you. First, let's talk about the benefits of threadless systems. The first pro is that 1 1 8 inch threadless is the modern standard, meaning you'll have the most options for frames and forks, stems, and handlebars. The vast majority of frame sets these days use a 1 1 8 threadless system, meaning you'll have the most frame options for how exactly you want to build your bike. With regards to material, geometry, clearances, and mounts for fenders and racks, or lack thereof if you want to build a super clean fixed gear. That also means you'll have more choices for aftermarket forks. If you want to change up your bike's fork rake to change the front end steering characteristics, change up your fork's material for better durability or better weight, or again, have better clearance for fatter tires or options for racks and fenders. And you'll also have a ton of options for stems so you can get the exact angle, length, brands and finish that you want out of your threadless stem. Since 1 and 1 8 is the industry standard, it will give you the most options for how you can build your bike. That includes another big benefit of threadless, which is the clamp. Threadless stems also come in 31.8 millimeter diameter clamps. These larger clamp areas allow for handlebars to feel a lot stiffer, which for a lot of people can feel much better to sprint on. And for those of you that like the most amount of stiffness out of your bike, 31.8 bars and stems are flat out going to be stiffer than their skinnier brethren. And some riders, after riding 31.8, just like it so much better than 26.0 or 25.4 bars that they flat out cannot go back to those sizes. The vast majority of threadless stems also have removable face plates, making swapping out your handlebars without swapping out the stem super easy. This is especially important for us fixed gear riders since a lot of us like to swap out our handlebars just for fun. It's really quick and easy to do because we don't have a lot of cables for derailers and sometimes we don't even have cables for brakes, making swapping out handlebars a two to three minute job and a two to four bolt process. In case you didn't know, threadless versus threaded stems also require different forks and different headsets. And the threadless headsets in my eyes are generally better than threaded headsets. If you get a sealed bearing threadless headset, it will practically be maintenance free. Maybe once every two to three years, it's a good idea to re-grease the headsets. Compare that to threaded headsets on the other hand, they tend to be a bit more finicky and they aren't always as maintenance free as threadless. And the last advantage of threadless is the looks, partially because there's so many options when it comes to stems. Threadless has a very versatile style it can be anything from classy and retro to modern or anything from rugged to elegant. On top of that, pun intended, you could also play with the accenting of your bike with top caps and spacers. They do come with their drawbacks though, and depending on who you are, threadless may not be for you. The biggest drawback is threadless has poor adjustability. For most threadless frame sets, is, this is going to sound shallow, but a threadless setup will only look good if the stem is below the saddle. If you're trying to get your stem and handlebars at or above saddle height for more comfort, you're going to have this grotesque 
tall stack of spacers that looks like you're trying to play Jenga with your steer tube. On the flip side, if you want to lower your handlebars, it's also going to look really ugly if you do so without cutting your top tube. As many of you in the last episode of Fixie Points commented on my bike. On top of that, cutting your steer tube is a pretty involved process. And if you want to do it properly and cleanly, it's going to take specialized tools. It's possible to do it with household tools. You can see exactly how well that went for me by clicking the card above. And once you do cut the steer tube, you are 100% committing to that position with that fork. If you find that you're getting older like me, it's my birthday today, or that you injured your back or you want a more upright position because you now live in a city and need to see over cars, that's too bad. If you want to get more upright, you'll either have to get a really ugly steer tube extender, get an entirely new fork with a longer steer tube, or swap up your handlebars to a more upright bar. A lower handlebar position is inherently more aggressive, so less people are going to be able to ride it, meaning it's a pain in the butt if you share your bike with people, or it's a pain in the butt if you want to try and sell your bike and it will hurt your bike's resale value since less people can ride it. And adjustability is the biggest upside for threaded stems. They have so much more adjustability than threadless systems. This makes for really versatile builds like super aggressive stems for racier builds, neutral 17 degree stems, which are great for most builds and look awesome. And then there's these super tall and comfy dirt drop stems that can easily get your handlebars above your saddle if you have back problems. You can also adjust the handlebar heights on the fly with just a single bolt, which makes it a lot easier for multiple people to have the proper fit on the same bike, which also means you'll never have to cut a steer tube and hurt your frame set's resale value. And for us fix your riders, if you thought threadless stems made it super easy to swap bars because of their removable face plates, threaded stems are even easier to swap up your cockpit, especially if you're riding brakeless and don't have to deal with cables. That can be as little as 30 seconds to swap out your cockpit. You could have a different stem and handlebars for every day of the week if you wanted. All that convenience also comes with a downside though, because it's so quick to remove the handlebars, that also makes them a lot easier to steal your cockpit. And the most apparent benefit of threaded systems over threadless is that they look super classy. In my eyes, there's something really timeless about a 17 degree threaded stem. The way that they look so thin and elegant contrasted against the thicker tubing of the frame set. And the fact that there's no visible steer tube with threaded stems just makes them look so seamless. And they look especially delicious on lugged steel frame sets. Now, the problem is though, unless you want a lugged steel frame set or a TIG welded classic inspired steel frame set, you're not going to have very many options for frames. Since 118 threadless is the standard for today's frame sets, frames with threaded systems are mostly going to be vintage steel bikes or vintage inspired steel bikes or the occasional Cannondale track inspired frame set. 90 plus percent of these frames are going to be steel. Probably 99% of the forks are going to be steel and you will not have access to carbon stems. Threaded stems also have less options for clamp diameters, meaning there's less options for handlebars. You can get 26.0 or 25.4 or some weird old European standard that bikes don't use anymore. These cockpit setups will be noticeably less stiff than 31.8 millimeter stems and handlebars. And for some people, they just cannot stand the flex in the handlebars. Again, it comes down to personal preference. Personally, I could ride 26.0, 25.4 or 31.8 perfectly happily, but I choose to ride 26.0 because I think it looks a lot better on steel frame sets. Just know that with threaded systems, you will have less options for clamp diameters. Speaking of clamps, the vast majority of threaded stems have a single bolt design and don't have removable face plates, making it pretty tedious if you want to swap out your handlebars without also swapping out the stem. Because they don't have removable face plates, that means you have to unwrap or ungrip your bars, loop the bars through the stem to take them out, 
and then loop the new bars through the stem and then re-grip and re-tape those bars. It's fine if you just ride one set of handlebars per bike, but for someone like me, I like to swap out my bars from time to time to change up the way my bike rides. It's an unnecessary pain in the arse. As we discussed before, if you're riding brakeless, it's super easy to steal your cockpit. Since everything is fastened with just a single bolt, a thief can steal your cockpit in 10 seconds or less. There are workarounds to this security issue, like sticking a ball bearing into the bolt with clear coat nail polish or by using aftermarket bolt locks. But again, you have to strike the balance for convenience and for security for yourself. And the last drawback of threaded systems, their headsets can be pretty finicky. Low quality and poorly adjusted threaded headsets can loosen up over time, causing play in the steer tube, which can make it pretty sketchy to ride on and it can feel jittery when braking. Keep in mind though that this isn't an issue if you have a good headset that is properly adjusted, but threadless will be lower maintenance if you're on a budget and a lot easier to adjust if it ever comes loose. So is threadless or threaded right for you? The answer to that comes down to how much you value one, your handlebar height and two, the looks of each system. For threadless, if your handlebars are lower than your saddle, this will be better for you. They're more versatile, their removable face plates make them a lot more convenient, and using a top cap to adjust the headset instead of big old wrenches is a lot more user friendly. They're also lower maintenance and you'll have more options for everything. But threaded does have its place in the bike world. The number one person threaded is good for is for somebody who needs to have their handlebars above their saddle, like somebody with back problems, people who get injured, older folks, people who otherwise wouldn't be able to ride racier bikes that we see so much of today. Because more upright riding positions will maximize comfort and minimize the strain on a rider's back. Threaded stems allow for more people to get on bikes, and that's a good thing. The second type of person threaded is great for are people who really appreciate that classic look. And if you really like the look of threaded and having a really sweet looking bike inspires you to ride it by all means, go threaded. And feel free to check out this video that I made with Wabi Cycles on what exactly goes into a steel bike and why exactly I love riding steel frames that so much versus other frame materials. Fixie famous shout out to Ryan Witt and Stan Strong 108 for supporting the channel through Patreon because you guys helped to make these fixed gear videos possible.